Oops, it's me. Hello, David. Hello. Uh, well, I, I invited a new person. This I week. I recognize. That's fantastic. Thank you. Alrighty. So Lovely. Just, so you know there wasn't some weird stranger snuck in. Well, she looks <laughs> she looks a little weird, but uh, I'm okay with that. <laughs> Welcome, uh, Jan. Thank you for the session yesterday. Oh my God, I was so energized after that. It was like I was bouncing off the walls all day. Oh, fantastic. Your yeah, husband so must have loved that. <laughs> so that's why I'm here from yeah. yesterday. Yeah. So good. Right on. Yeah, Jan too. Yeah. Right on. Mm -hmm. We even walked out, went out and walked in the wind in the. <laughs> yeah, that's that right. Her night went for an hour and a half walk after. Yeah, that was a refreshing wind yesterday, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, you record them too? Not on purpose. They just, well, what happens is I have quite a few um, people who can't make it at right. the required okay. times that have been uh, sort of followers for a long time. So for those people, I, uh, I uh, send it to them after. It's no. awesome when you do that. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Brenda. Yeah, I didn't plan on it, but it sort of started happening. And I was like, okay, well, if I can, if I can help out a few more people that can't make it at nine or seven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah, I'll well do it. Welcome, Jody. Hi. Hi. Good to be here. Hey. Nice to Yay. see you. Yay. <laughs> I'm exactly. so excited. Yay. <laughs> Woo. Exactly. Hope you enjoy. Yeah. Good. All right. So let's so let's have everyone mute themselves at this point. Sure. And not that I don't want to hear your lovely voices. It just might be. There we go. Okay get this camera set up voila So as far as uh, accoutrement, um, obviously yoga mat, uh, a pillow or cushion, definitely uh, something, something along these lines. If you have a yoga bolster, great, that can work. Yoga blanket, possibly too, as a different option and for Shavasana. And if you have any myofascial balls, grab those too, because those are a great option for uh, freeing up the voice. If you don't, it's okay. That's why we've got yoga bolsters and pillows and cushions and blankets and all that. So no worries. But if you have them, I know a few of you do. 4 inch, 5 inch, and 6 inch, all for different spots in the body. All right. Let's start off in everybody's favorite yoga position, the back. Tucking the shoulder blades down the back. Breathing in and out through the nose. Palms soft, feet soft. Jaw joint soft.
kneecaps release. Feeling the floor. And for the next couple of minutes, <clears throat> I'm going to gently chase after that vagus nerve. So inhaling nose, exhaling hum. And we're hoping that hum is nice and soft. No performative force to it or anything like that. Simply... Mm, a gentle hum that will tend to fall in pitch as you go. And pausing for about five to eight heartbeats at the end of each hum exhalation. Less of a pause and more of a drift at the end of the exhalation. Challenging those CO2 levels a little bit. So we might think we're at the end of our exhalation, we're not.
And now breathing normally, let the hum go. And just breathe and notice. Inhale, hum the left knee into the chest. So we're learning to use the voice to launch movement. Good for the voice, good for the immune system, good for the O2-CO2 balance, good for the pelvic floor, good for empowerment, strength, good for core awakening. Can't really think of anything it's not good for, actually. Inhale, hum the leg back. And because it wakes up the core, it's also good for mobility as well as flexibility. Inhale, hum the right leg into the chest. So if it feels like the core is moving your leg, or the hum is moving your leg, or the breath is moving your leg, as opposed to your leg moving your leg, you're winning. leading, of course, to a greater embodiment of your voice. And hum the leg back down. Hmm. Up the ante, hum both legs up. Feel the hum leading the way. Inhale, gather strength. Send the hum through the tailbone, legs lift. Hug them in.
Inhale, hum yourself up to sitting. Now let's find our pillow or yoga bolster or rolled up blanket. The idea is that the pillow or Mexican blanket perhaps is the size where it will mostly fit in between the top of your pelvic crest and the base of your rib cage. So right in there and all the soft googly parts. So between top of the pelvic crest and the rib cage, lie flat. So this posture, we use both active and passive breathing. So firstly, active. So a little bit of intention, pressing that belly into the pillow on the inhalation, inspiratory muscle training. And then open the mouth now and let the exhalation whoosh out without any holding. So we're not controlling the exhale, we're letting it whoosh out and then we drift. So for the purposes of this exercise, there's three parts to the breathing cycle. Inhalation, exhalation, drift. Now, some of you might want to free form this, but let me lead you through one just to check the timing that we're not inhaling too, uh, too forcefully. So, getting rid of your air, mouth closed, inhale, 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 feeling the inhale into the pillow, inhale, inhale, exhale, whoosh. Let it out. Now it's just draining out to the end, to the end. Now wait. Six, five, tummy loose. Four, three, two, one. Inhale into the pillow. Feeling like your entire inhale is into the pillow. We know that's not totally true physiologically, but we don't care. Inhale, inhale. Exhale, whoosh. Let it out. Very hard for some people to do to just let their exhale go. Six, five, four, three, two, one. All right, on your own, two minutes. Please ask questions if they come up.
right, and now let's switch to passive breathing. Let the body breathe you. You just hang out and wait for nothing in particular. If your head is to the side, turn your head to the other side. And come up and pull the pillow out and then lie back down and check out your breathing. Has anything changed? So essentially what we're doing with all that is simultaneously turning the six pack off and turning the transverse and other core muscles on. That's the whole idea there. All right, let's use our hum to come up to all fours. Cat twist. Inhale nose, sigh through the mouth. So inhale, do nothing. <sighs> inhale up. Exhale, other side. <sighs> inhale up. Exhale, other side. Back and forth. Waking up those intercostals for rib cage mobility. Inhale up. Happy puppy. One arm forward, elbow locked. Stretching through the armpit. Inhale up. Exhale down again. We're targeting those muscles that tend to get in the way of the voice. Often they correspond to the secondary respiratory muscles. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale. Downward dog, use your breath to launch the pose. Inhale. <sighs> Inhale. 
Inhale, exhale into upward dog. Did your breath get interrupted or was there flow? Inhale, down dog. <sighs> Inhale, keep that breath moving throughout the entirety of the movement into up dog and beyond. <sighs> this is big especially for musical theater as we're learning to move without holding our breath. And back to all fours, cat twist hum. And this time let it go as long as you can. <laughs> Inhale up. Inhale up, cat twist. And notice how I'm letting the breath pressure change the pitch of the voice. I'm not fighting any part of this. Inhale up, happy puppy. Inhale up, happy puppy. Inhale up, can you use your hum to launch your bum into the air? Hum your bum. Bet you didn't think you'd hear that today. Yeah, there's a bumper sticker for my brand. That'll probably get me the wrong clients. Anyway, hum into upper dog. Or maybe the right clients. And back to all fours. We're almost through this series. Now... So what we've done here, just come off your wrists for a moment. Sit on the sit on the feet, arms out to the sides, press through the heel of the hand. See if you can get the fingers parallel to the walls, drop the shoulder blades, and then roll those shoulder blades around a little bit. Feel those nerves in the arms. Yay. See if you can get those fingers straight and parallel to the wall. If you can't, that's okay. Keep doing it. It'll come. This is huge for keeping carpal tunnel at bay. This one in particular, because as we know, carpal tunnel has nothing to do with the wrists. Carpal tunnel comes from upper back tightness which then refers all the way down into the wrists. Um, so what we've done is we've created a safe environment for the voice. Body first, or maybe breath first actually, breath first, then add body to the breath, then add the hum to the body and the breath, and now hopefully we've created a safe vessel for the voice. So we're using the body and breath to warm up the voice, not the voice to warm up the voice. Cat twist, hey, and again you let it go as long as you can. Inhale through the nose. Exhale, hey. Inhale up, 
Inhale up. Happy puppy. He. He. Inhale up. He. Inhale up. Ho for downward dog. Make sure the HO starts just before you move so it feels like you weigh less. It feels like the vowel and the breath combined launch you into downward dog as opposed to downward dog being a, oh, not this pose again. Inhale. Ho. shoulders, sexy mermaid. Ah. And come up, sit on the feet, roll the shoulders. And let's tuck our toes under. I know this is a favorite. All those little tiny muscles in the feet. We need the feet to be awake. For the voice to be fully embodied. Because there's a diaphragm at the base of the feet as well. And that is connected through fascia to the pelvic floor. And we need those talking to each other as much as we need the pelvic floor and the thoracic diaphragm talking to each other. And what part of our body do we use the most? Probably the feet. So if you're feeling a certain <laughs> in this pose, keep at it. All right, come off and then onto the ankles and then surf up. Go for a little water ski. Shoulders relaxed. Front ankle stretch. And of course we know we will need circulation down there, especially if we're slightly over 28. And down, and tuck the toes once more. And coming off. And water ski. And you sh were hoping, I'm hoping you feel like you have control of this pose. You can press into the hands and give a little bit more ankle stretch, or you can release and have the knees a little closer to the floor. First time doesn't feel particularly in control, but that's the idea with a little bit, bit of practice. And coming down. All right, so options for the next one. Uh, working against zoomitis or computer kyphosis. Good is same pillow if that's what you have. Underneath the upper back, shoulders hanging off. Better. is a yoga bolster 
just underneath the armpits, like so. Best, because as you can see, the bolster is going across the shoulder blades. So that means the shoulder blades are being held up by the bolster. Best is a five inch myofascial ball because then the shoulder blades are able to melt around each side, which is one of the many reasons I made these things, had these things made. So whichever way you can go, it'll all work. The ball is the most specific and most effective, but the bolster and pillow will work, work well as well. So please ask questions if you're not sure, but uh, pick, pick one of those and lie on your back again. Lengthen the back of the neck, tuck the chin the, gently. Rule of thumb is we'd like the forehead and the chin to be at the same level. So if you feel like your chin is way in the air and your forehead is closer to the floor than the chin, put a pillow under your head or a blanket under your head for support, just to keep that neck safe. Oh, another option is a pool noodle. Those are easy to find. Wally Mart, uh, you can use a pool noodle underneath. the upper back as well, or a rolled up yoga mat. I'm full of ideas this morning. Your cat, you know, whatever works. Without trying or pushing or using muscles, can you feel your breath into whatever you've got behind your back? So in a way, we're doing exactly the same thing back here as we did with the pillow under the tummy at the beginning of the class. Can you map out your lungs back there? Your lungs are awfully close to that 
ball or blanket or bolster or pillow. Can you imagine them expanding into the ball, bolster, mat? There is movement back there. Come off whatever you're on, <laughs> take it out, and then lie flat and check and see if anything's changed in that. Perhaps mobility. Either in the upper back or and or in the side ribs. Inhale, hey yourself up to sitting. Hey. hey, and coming up to standing, do a little bit of bouncer, get that circulation going, then we'll come back to the ribs. Oh, bouncing at the knees. Let's do a couple to start. Now check in with the shoulders. Are we letting those shoulders bounce as much as they could? Let them bounce a little more. And now check the jaw joint. Is that free? Let that bounce more. And how about the head and neck? Let it bounce a little bit more. Shoulders. Jaw. Now a little bit of <laughs> 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 So noticing the space in the back of the throat as you make the sound. Oh. 
making sure that that ah has lots of space in the soft palate. It's feeling open. Ah, keep bouncing. We're almost there. And come to stillness. And notice the buzz. And let's do a little sumo stomp with a hey, so like this, hey, and overdrop that larynx, hey, hey, couple on your own, does it feel like the foot stomp and pelvic floor drop is having an effect on the voice? So if it feels something like this, hey, it's not connected. Hey, feel the whoosh from below. Try it again, two or three. So we're going to take you up. And what I'd like you to do is do a sumo. So there are various levels of sumo. There's simple sumo, or little sumo, where it's just a very uh, subtle knee bend. There's bigger sumo, where you bend the knees even more. And if you feel like you need lower, more lower body engagement, you stomp that foot to wake up the system. Just depends how connected we are to our lower body. Okay, let's give it a try, see how it feels, and oh. six inch yellow sun ball if you have it if not again yoga bolster um, block maybe pillow blanket I suspect you'll need two of those other things if you don't have the uh, sun ball so I'll show it with pillow bolster first so we might need a bolster and then a pillow on top of it So we're going after the serratus intercostal side ribs here. And then my head is on my arm. If I have the ball, I'm going to pick a spot. And this is on the user manual, those of you that have it. Pick a spot and lie on it. Then after a few breaths, pick another spot on the rib cage and breathe into that rib cage side as you go. You get up a little closer to the armpit and it might be a little uh, as we say euphemistically in yoga, you might be getting some feedback, which is a really kind way to say pain. So be gentle with it, but uh, there's some really active lymph nodes in there that will be happy to get a gentle caress. So about two or three more breaths. And those of you that are now on the ball, come up a little bit and massage that ball around. Okay. 
and apologies. This is a uh, this is a whole bunch easier if you're not wearing a bra. So there, there. If you needed permission, there it is. <laughs> Which you certainly don't. <laughs> but it just occurred to me. We don't want to dig the material into the sides. And then come off. And here's the cool part. Sit, breathe into your two sides of your rib cage and see what you notice. What a difference. Like one side is naturally moving and billowing outwards. The other side's... All right. You know the drill. I don't want you walking in circles all day. So switch the pillow bolster, blanket, and or ball. Again, if you're on the ball, do a static pose to start and then do a massage after about 10 breaths. And everything we've done today is outlined either in the user manual or the uh, the ebook. If it didn't, if some of it didn't quite connect, I'll bet it did. Or you just want to do it again. And a little bit of massage if you've got the ball. And get around to the front a little bit. And then around to the back a little bit. And then down to the bottom of the rib cage. And then up in towards the armpit. Most important thing for singers, diaphragmatic mobility. Second most important thing, a very close second is rib cage mobility. So the diaphragm mobility will give you your rib cage mobility for the most part. Especially if you do this as well. We want those ribs to move naturally, not by us yanking them outwards. So again, we want to feel that breath dropping in easily. All right, coming off. And again, sit and breathe and notice. Excellent. Just for a moment, let's return to Cat Twist. And uh, I'd like you to play with both registers chest and head in cat twist and if you if you did mostly one or the other the first time try the, the other one the other time but I'd like us to perhaps notice if cat twist feels any different after the ball being underneath the spine and underneath the ribcage so cat twist is hey hey so going in the head voice and seeing what the twist is like. And then up and other side. Hey, or hey, whichever one you want. Play. Keep this stuff playful. That's what helps us learn it faster. Hey, what helps the body learn it faster? Hey. 
And other side. And coming up, grabbing a blanket, and lie on your back and put your blanket over top of you for Shavasana. Shavasana exists to give the body a chance to integrate what we've done during the yoga class. From a physiological perspective, that's what it's about. There's other stories, other reasons, those are valid too, but essentially we've opened ourselves up a ton and we want that openness to solidify isn't quite the right word, but it's close. If we open ourselves up in a yoga class, then run right out into traffic, that stress is going to go into the cells. But if we give ourselves a chance to sort of integrate and solidify the openness and freedom, then we are more resilient to what's coming up during the day. Eyes closed, body sinking into the floor. Does body and breath feel different from the last time we lay on our back right at the beginning of the class? Is the breathing pattern different? Wiggling the fingers and the toes. Rotating wrists and ankles. Stretching out the arms and legs.
Exhale yourself over to your side. Give yourself a big hug. Come up to sitting. And arms up. Take hold of the right wrist. Hey. Over to the side. And inhale up. Switch wrists up and out. Hey. Roll the shoulders, shake out the hands, and thank you. Thanks for coming, everyone. Oh, that's a big smile, Brenda. <laughs> thank you, know, you you're welcome thank and you, you know the one we did last week where we put the bolster under the hips that yes. was so helpful oh my goodness that just loosened my whole lower back up oh good okay well i'll uh, i'll remember that next time i yeah. see, you, see you on my doorstep on my zoom doorstep that's great to hear all right Thank you so much. It was great to have this uh, touch back in after the one session I did with you. One uh, thanks, Jody. I'm glad. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, any any thoughts or perspective? Love to love to hear them. So great to see you again. Thank you. Yeah, and how'd you how'd you do, Jan? Yeah, it was good. I really thought that was very helpful. Yeah, so good. maybe I can get rid of my old lady voice. <laughs> It can certainly help. You betcha. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a great day. Take care. Bye.